Well, hello and welcome back to the future. I'm Mark Griffiths and today oh, I've got goals are plenty for you. 2003, last game of the season. The situation, quite simple. Dennis Smith, after being relegated, unable to fix the side that he inherited, goes for broke, obviously recognises that Division 4 wasn't the highest quality and changes to a back three system where the two full wing-backs are really wingers, Carlos Edwards and Paul Edwards. Also, he always said that his strikers always scored goals. Uh, Andy Morrell took a bit of his word. So Andy Morrell goes into this game on 38 goals. Wrexham have been promoted. And Wrexham also, if they win this match, will equal the club record for most consecutive wins. Their opponents, Newport County, in the Welsh Premier Cup. FA of Wales, yeah, the Welsh Premier Cup final. I should have stuck some of foot in my guns. In the FAW Welsh Premier Cup final, yeah. Oh, I did that after the live stream has stopped. That's how live works. So, Newport have gone out of business and are now a Phoenix club coming back up again. But this is a hell of a task, beating Wrexham, the informed side. Not necessarily that they're not capable of it, though. In the quarterfinals, they knocked out Swansea City. In the semi-finals, they drew with Cardiff and then beat them on penalties. So Newport, managed by ex-Welsh international Peter Nicholas, no mugs whatsoever. Plus, Wrexham have got some issues. Darren Ferguson is injured and can't play. And despite the fact that the midfield maestro's not there, poor old Steve Thomas, who scored a hat-trick in the semi-final, doesn't get a starting place in the final. But generally, it's that familiar lineup that got Wrexham promoted. Paul Whitfield in goal rather than Andy Dibble. But then it's easy to forget that Whitfield was a crucial deputy for Dibble, who, when the elder statesman was injured, pulled off some fantastic performances. His one-man show, earning a 1-0 win at South End, was utterly magnificent. So Whitfield in goal. Uh, the back three, of course, containing such legends as the tall man, as well as Sean Pedrick and Brian Carey. The two Edwards twins on the wings, ripping into sides. In midfield, Ferguson was absent, but Scott Green, who was a crucial mid-season signing, was there to add a bit of experience to the middle of the pitch. Jim Whitley as well, a very steady character and a non-stop running of Paul Barrett. And up front, that deadly combination. Andy Morrell, supported by Lee Trundle, the man who was supposed to be the star, but as Morrell smashed in goal after goal, found himself being a very able foil. So, Morrell in fabulous form, Wrexham promoted. Can they push on and get the double? Let's join the mountain teams for their national anthem. Our national anthem. Why did I say their national anthem? Most of them are Welsh. <laughs>
it's a beautiful evening in North East Wales. Let's join our commentary team for this, the FAW Premier Cup final. Wrexham against Newport County in the box tonight for two Ians. Ian, first of all, Ian Gwynne Hughes. Thanks, Ollie. Yes, it is a, a beautiful evening here in Wrexham. It's part time at the race course. Wrexham aiming for a cup and promotion double. Just to confirm their team, Paul Whitfield plays in place of Andy Dibble. There's uh, no Stephen Roberts, Sean Pedgett comes in in place of him and Scott Green returns after injury in place of Captain Darren Ferguson. Injured a training ground incident during the week. This is the Newport County side selected by manager Peter Nicholas. It's a team that uh, started the game against Cardiff City in the semi-final. Plenty of experience there, the guard. And all in watch out pace of Gad Hurd over Swansea City in the quarter-final. The referee this evening is from Cardiff and it's Ray Ellingham who is obviously camera shy at the moment but uh, an experienced camp referee generally acknowledged as one of the best in Wales and certainly one of the stars of Wrexham's promotion season Lee Trundle formed an excellent partnership with a certain Andy Morrell of course Andy Morrell 38 goals in all competitions made his name in this competition in the year 2000 when he scored seven in the quarter-final against Merthyr Tidville and the management team who've guided Wrexham back to the second division after only a season's absence Dennis Smith and Kevin Russell Newport County's captain is Mark Rose and they'll be hoping to achieve a hat-trick of victories against nationwide league clubs they've brought about five six hundred supporters with them which is an excellent away turnout when you consider it's a Thursday night and it's a long journey from Newport to Wrexham it's a Swansea City of course in the quarter-final Cardiff City and penalties in the semi-final and Peter Nicholas who would have enjoyed several league encounters here and international appearances for Wales will be confident that his side can complete a hat-trick this evening once again the pitch is in absolute perfect condition as many you would find in August and uh, the scene is set Ian Walsh well uh, as the boy there before the game I think you've got a fancy Wrexham uh, on the race course with a pitch like this but I think a very important factor is the fact that Darren Ferguson is not the boy didn't mention that before the game I think he's very influential he sits in the centre of midfield it could become more of a battle tonight than you put it like Wrexham then in their familiar red and white playing from right to left and uh, Newport County amber and black defending the goal away to our left which is occupied by the Newport supporters and uh, Wrexham They've uh, beaten Cardiff City twice final here, lost to Barry Town, uh, victors at uh, Swansea City, and it was only last season, but they didn't feed enough at all. This is uh, Newport County's best ever performance in this competition, did very well to get through the group stages, the group which included TNS and Bangor City. Here's Carlos Edwards. Important for Newport to keep the game tight in the early stages, but Wrexham one feature of their football this season it's been free flowing and it's been attacking yeah, you can see there Jim Whitley is just sat into that central role for Wrexham taking the, uh, the place of Ferguson in there he's trying to keep things well but I think again it's the wide well, very well very it's an adult for goal the but I think the keeper wanted to make that save just to settle his nerves it was very impressive against Cardiff City but he's in for the uh, injured Pat Mountain I don't think his defenders will agree with you there, Ian. I think at the near post, he was going yard, yard wide. Yes, he's got to make sure. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, the defenders will be too happy with that. Maxim's first corner. After only a minute and a half, it's Scott Green with the corner. And it's Dennis Lawrence off the line, and it's in. Joe 
just not what Newport County wanted. They appeal, they don't believe that the ball has crossed the line, but it was Dennis Lawrence who got up there from Scott Green's header. The ball ricocheted all over the place, but the assistant referee on the far side had no doubt, and Wrexham have the perfect start. Well, it's the second time of asking chance there, and it's come back off the four, actually, Andrew Thomas, and he puts it over his own goal line. It was Chris Collins who got uh, the first touch, he got that away, but unfortunate for Newport, what a poor start. And again, Ian, it's all come from that save from the young keeper. I didn't feel he had to make that save. He'd got his angles right. Ty Davis will talk more about that at half-time. But there was a needless corner to give away so early in the game. Well, after all the preparation and looking forward to the occasion, Peter Nicholas will be very disappointed with that. But Wrexham have scored so many from set-pieces recently. That's when Darren Ferguson has been involved. And I think they saw the game against Carlisle where four of the six goals came from corner kicks or, or free kicks and, and they struck again. Well, Brian Carey's another one, they've got two very big centre-halves in Lawrence and Carey that can go up for set-pieces, you know, and uh, Newport will have wanted to come here tonight and kept a clean sheet for at least 20, 25 minutes to get a little bit of a frustration in the home side. That hasn't happened, now the game will open up. A real frustrated Wrexham in the semi-final for about uh, an hour. Wrexham scored four late goals. They never looked in danger of losing that game. But it's uh, a good start. And Dennis Lawrence, who's uh, grown in stature this season for Wrexham after a shaky start last season, new to league football and playing in a struggling side, has really developed alongside Brian Carey this season. Here's Shepherd. Newport need to settle themselves down. Nathan Davis. Here's Michael Fowler. He's possessed. And Wrexham could catch Newport on the break. They're so quick. Morel was in an offside position, spotted by the assistant referee on the far side. That's a shame, really, because Rex, uh, Newport started to put four or five passes together. Mike Fowler saw the gap in front of him, knocked it, overhit it, and he was easily cut out. But um, maybe slight change of tactics for Peter Nicholas now. Does he hold on, maintain what he's set out uh, at the start of the game, or because they're 1-0 down, does he change things? Well, and there he is. Not happy, I'm sure. But, uh, it's a throw to Newport. Steve Benton will take. Perfect start for Wrexham if you're just joining us. It's Dennis Lawrence or maybe Andrew Thomas when the ball shot to first time effort, and it's the first time that Paul Whitfield has been called into action. Newport looking to strike back as soon as possible. Here's Dennis Lawrence, the goal scorer, but the ball did come back off Andrew Thomas. It was the referee's assistant on the far side who gave the goal to Wrexham. Here's Brian Carey. Looking towards Scott Green, who's got beyond the defence, but was just in an offside position. Green, who's made an impact since signing from Wigan. Well, he's been that little bit of strength in midfield that they've lacked. They've got lots of good footballers at Wrexham, but that man that gives them a little bit of extra steel, and I tell you, he gets in the box very well from that left side position. £50,000 for the winners, £50,000 for the runners-up. And it's a goal kick to Wrexham. Memorable games between these clubs in the past, of course, in both League and uh, Welsh Cup. Newport County aside under Peter Nicholas, who looking to regain confidence status at least, and will have no doubt to benefited from the revival of clubs like Aldershot and Accrington Stanley over the past few seasons who will be playing in the conference next season lost their last league game 5-2 at home but uh, played several youngsters that day several were on the bench Chris Rogers is an exciting talent according to Peter Nicholas also on the bench experienced Mark Dickerson who's made a comeback from a cruciate ligament injury Lloyd Stone, Wraith Plant, Chris Rogers, Alan Stevenson and Mark Dickerson. Their substitutes, Newport Counties, Wrexham's, Christian Rogers, Sean Holmes, Lee Jones, Steve Thomas and young Craig Morgan. Technique got to be better than that. This is what they don't want. When they get into advanced positions, Newport, they've got to keep possession of the ball. They've got to make it count. They've got to try to get decent balls into the penalty box. Because the two boys up front, there's no doubt about it. Neil Davis and Shepard, they can score goals given the opportunity. 
Here's Fowler, once had a trial here at the race course when Brian Flynn was manager. Brother, of course, former Coventry player, Lee Fowler. Beaten by Eckhart. It's Carey. Made a late surge for top goal scorer Brian Carey. Scored two against Carlisle, also on the score sheet against Cambridge. Chris Collins, former Swindon Town player, with his throw to his captain Rose. Nathan Davis. Andrew Thomas, Benton's wide on the left-hand side. Inside is Michael Fowler. Neil Davis is losing possession. The, the Newport players have just got to settle down in possession. You know, the, uh, Wrexham aren't having to go into win challenges. What they're doing, they're just standing off and allowing the, the Newport players, they're just a little bit frustrated at the moment, just keep a cool head, try to get passing the ball. You know, it's still very, very early in the game. Bright sunshine. It's a perfect end of season, really, in terms of uh, football at the race ground is in excellent condition. Everyone in a relaxed mood, having clear motion back to second division. Here's Dennis Lawrence. Jim Whitley. Carlos Edwards makes a run. Pedrick. 21 international looking towards Morel. Eckhart is there first. Or Newport counts Whitley with Eckhart again. Gave an excellent performance. Was upfield against the City. And he's created the chance there for Gary Shepherd and just a bit of a lack of misunderstanding there. Standing between and David. Shepherd Rexon. He is, he's got pace, but um, I think when you score, and I think Peter Nicholas there will be hoping maybe, what were you just saying about promotion, being a little bit, you know, relaxed tonight, and they've scored that early goal, sometimes it can go the other way, you know, you know, it can make you too relaxed, and maybe Wrexham has started to sit off a little bit, and allowing Newport to have the ball to see what they can offer, you know, I'm sure Dennis Smith wants his team to go on and get the second, third and fourth goals, but football's sometimes very funny like that. Neat touch from Scott Green. Here's Pedrick. Carlos Edwards wide on the right. Scott Green goes inside to Pedrick. And he's released. Paul Barrett. Barrett has got Morel in the middle. And uh, got the uh, cross all wrong there. Here's Paul Edwards. Whitley. Scott Green away from him, here's Paul Edwards again. Two Newport players in front of him, Whitley looking for Tundall, Tundall fouling Eckhart. Yeah, he's not happy Lee Tundall, he wanted the ball played into him a lot earlier than that. They kept it out there, Whitley and Edwards on this left-hand side. Then it's a battle then between Eckhart and Trundle. Trundle had half the yard a few moments before that. But I tell you, a little look earlier between Trundle and uh, Jason Perry, it was fantastic. With two characters, they're going to be at it uh, for the 90 minutes, that's for sure. Paul Edwards has to defend, Chris Collins is putting pressure on him. Jackson throw. Green. Andrew Thomas, one of the youngsters, 20 year old in the Newport side, looking to release Neil Davis, and the former Aston Villa player. Knocked off the ball by Sean Pedrick, whose father, of course, Mel, is the uh, physio here, and was a long serving player with Hereford and Rexham. Straight to Whitley. Only Morel to aim for, really. And the ball comes off for Jason Perry. 
Here's Tundall. And ball from Lee Tundall. this boy when he gets in the box definitely handball good uh, decision from the assistant referee on that side but he's a handful in around the penalty box Jeff Eckard and uh, Jason Perry will have to get really tight to him when the ball goes forward Carey with the challenge hits his head in here's Eckhart Benton to aim for just to put the ball behind him see what was going through his mind uh, unusual for Jeff Eckhart, very experienced with a 40, he would have kept the ball nice and uh, tidy keep it short and sharp with the passing but trying to hit a, a long ball over the back and uh, you know, easy out for the throw in here's Morel Benson played the ball to him, Morel still going gets a bit of luck, Morel 2-0 poor defending you have to say from Newport County they had plenty of players there especially against a player who has now scored 39 goals this season allowed to go all the way there were four or five county defenders there shouldn't have been allowed the space but Andy Morrell with what less than a quarter of an hour gone makes it Wrexham 2 Newport County nil. well he gets that little bit of luck there but then what a cool head there after a fantastic little lob over the keeper but the desire was there he, could, he wanted to attack the defenders he got the little bit of luck and it's a fantastic finish good technique dipping lob over the keeper and far too easy for Wrexham to score that goal Peter Nicholas will be fuming well he scored 19 goals in the tournament now he's the top scorer in the tournament by far and uh, he needs uh, is it two or three two more to be the top scorer in the tournament this season Top scorers at the moment are Graham Evans of Persus and Andy Moran of Rill. And uh, Andy Morell has now got four. 2 0 already. Newport County really need to steady themselves, get back into this game quickly because with Wrexham's confidence, it could turn into a rout. So disappointing, really, that. Uh but haven't played well they haven't kept the ball well I think they panicked a little bit in possession uh, and again you know when there's been simple passes on they've tried to kill the ball and, and really to get back you've got to start from scratch start from basic keep possession of the ball they've given it away far too easily talking of people like Andy Morell of course could be his uh, last appearance in the Wrexham shirt 14 Wrexham players are out of contract of course uh, I suppose that's the story all around the lower divisions mistake there by Scott Green but handball against Matt Rose I'm sure somebody will take Andy Morell on with you <laughs> I'm sure they <laughs> There'll will there'll be a few clubs after him if uh, he decided not to, to although the grass to isn't on. always greener as Craig Falkenbridge found out when he left Wrexham last year and if Craig Falkenbridge had stayed maybe Andy Morell would never have had his chance but it's Paul Whitfield <laughs> finds Morell there's a player that <laughs> That's usually uh, Lee Trundle's trick, isn't it? Didn't work then, but uh, it's of confidence from Morell. Dennis Lawrence heads forward. Foul by Morell on Rose. Free kick to Newport County. Jason Perry with a free kick. And towards Shepherd, Carey gets the ball away. Shepherd, two Wrexham defenders there and uh, Paul Edwards is first to the ball here's Trundle of course while Newport now have to commit men forward Wrexham have the pace to expose them at the back Carlos Edwards he's away from Jason Perry he's got Morrell in the middle and that's always the danger Ian yeah a superb break but that all stemmed from good centre forward play holding on to the ball being strong in possession then you've got the runner outside you and uh, he's the quickest player on the pitch Carlos Edwards up on it and there was no contents when he was up against uh, Jason Perry unfortunately this is the run Jason Perry can't get anywhere near him and just maybe didn't pull the ball far, far, far back enough for uh, Andy Morrell 
And Jason Perry was saying before the game, his last appearance here for a Welsh club was with Cardiff City in 1993 when uh, Cardiff City won by two goals to nil to clinch the, or go up as champions. Wrexham went up to the second division as runners up that season. Rose against Whitley. Here's Eckhart. Collins under pressure from Edwards. Dennis Lawrence and Andy Morell with the goals. And although there's a long way to go, it'll take a fantastic effort now from Newport County if they are yes, to achieve a, a hat-trick of victories against nationwide league clubs in this competition this season. Chris Collins with a throw for County. Andy Shepherd. It's possessed comfortably by Dennis Lawrence. only takes one goal and they're right back in the game at 2-1 that would boost their confidence they can't though afford to concede a third yeah next goal is uh, is so crucial to, to Newport it's got to come Newport's way you know to keep them uh, believing in that they can hack into this game at this moment time Wrexham 2-0 at dominating proceedings it's Carlos Edwards strong challenge from Rose Ball drops kind of Scott Green. It's nice to try and look for Paul Edwards. Lawrence, powerful header, Morel, Trundle. Show time from Trundle maybe. Well, let's go down to uh, Rob Phillips, our test line reporter have the view, a uh, Wrexham view, Queen. doesn't he? Right to the team, they're, they're carrying on where they've left off in the, in the last couple of weeks, scoring goals for fun and uh, it'll be important if Newport are going to get anything out of the game, they score the next goal otherwise the game could run away from them. And, and Morel, he just loves scoring goals. Yeah, he, he's on the high, um, 38 goals in the season and uh, he just love, loves being out there and uh, he's doing really well again tonight. Thanks very much. continues between Lee Trundle and Jeff Eckhart I'm sure a few words being exchanged yet again yeah but if you just watch this reaction from Jeff Eckhart there's only one, one thing he was going to do then he was going to clatter in the back of Lee Trundle I think he's got them going I think there's there's been a few words exchanged between the two big centre halves and the rest Bowler. Can Davis get in behind Pedic? The answer is no. 20 minutes played then. Wrexham leading 2 0. Dennis Lawrence after 90 seconds. And Andy Morell for the second. Newport need to find something, find some inspiration, and they need to show better quality than that. Here's Paul Barrett. Trundle, Carlos Edwards up ahead. Here is Carlos Edwards. Morel's in the middle. Chance for the third here. Whitley! Oh, so easy. They're turning it on this evening. And Newport County's defence is quite simply being undone by the pace of the likes of Carlos Edwards. Just over 20 minutes played. And uh, even this early, the Cup is coming back to the race courses. Wrexham 3, Newport County 0. Pace, pace, pace. That's the difference. And that boy's got an abundance of it. Carlos Edwards. Simple little finish from Jim Whitley. But this houses for intelligent Paul. That's top quality stuff. Aware of players around you. Aware of midfield players attacking the edge of the penalty box. Jim Whitley. Simple finish in the end. Had to stick it in the back of the net. He did it with a plum. Well, you get the impression, Ian, that having won promotion, that Exxon's players, maybe the manager, Dennis Smith, is saying, right, this is the last game of the season. Go out, show what you can do and enjoy it. Well, yeah, and they've got that early goal that makes all the yeah. difference. Um, as I said earlier, sometimes they can relax a little bit and take their foot off the pedal, but they haven't. They've done exactly the opposite out there, enjoying it. But the, the pace of Edwards and the, and the good 
centre forward play from Trundle is there to be seen. Andy Merrell puts the keeper Wesson under pressure. I'm sure that's the last place he wanted to be at that particular moment. To be fair to Wrexham since uh, winning promotion against Cambridge 5-0, they have been very professional. One at Lake Orient 1-0 and beat Bury by three goals to nil. In the accelerator as such. And it's just incredible the amount of goals they're scoring at the moment. Here's Carlos Edwards. Excellent football to Morel. It's all happening. It's going Wrexham's way. Eventually the ball is scrambled clear, only as far as Carlos Edwards. And it's a relief for the goalkeeper, I'm sure. Well, Lee Trundle with his striking partner here. Morel has got his 38 or so goals this season. Just a side, a ball sideways along the edge of the penalty box. And we've seen Trundle just with the keeper the beat. And I think there's a few words between them there. He can't believe that Andy Morel didn't pass that ball in. Morel. Here's Barrett. Trundle in the middle. Barrett just delaying. Paul Edwards is joining on the left-hand side. Carlos Edwards. Whitley scored the third goal. Dennis Lawrence joining the attack. Here is Lawrence. Loves to come forward. Lawrence. Morel touches it to Whitley. Paul Edwards not expecting the pass. All rather tight there. Uh, you can just uh, see with the new foot county players now all their energy and their optimism and their excitement about playing in a final it just seems to be visibly draining out of it. Here's Trundle. Goes one way. Tips it towards Carlos Edwards. It might drop for Morel. Desperate defending, but Jason Paddy gets it away. Barrett. Kirby. This place pass from Kirby to Fowler. Carlos Ed was just being a bit too cold. Nathan Davis. Eckhart. when Wrexham haven't got the ball and not in possession see how hard they work Whitley in midfield green closing players down to win the ball you know, even 3 nil up you know from, uh, I think it was Jason Perry on uh, Andy Morell wasn't it quite sure what happened there uh, Morell seemed to spit uh, maybe just a Andy Morell is saying a word with Jason Perry Just sense that we're prizing for, for, for many Perry and out there. Not, and uh, I wonder what, whether we'll see uh, Newport with 11 men at the end of this game. Trundle. Edwards to Trundle. Trundle will fancy going himself here. challenge from Jason Perry. Let's see what happened here. Is Whitley is caught. Um, that's not the incident. But, uh, I'm sure it's uh, instantly and uh, Andy Morell. Here's Brian Carey. Carey, no one to pass it to. We put had a steady line of five defenders there. Here is Perry. Wesson will need a good clearance this time around. Pedic. Here's Green. Edwards against Collins. Showing too much of the ball to Rose. Here's Shepherd. Too many players around him, but he wins the free. Kick. 
just need that bit of luck now Newport don't they, they just a little bit of luck see if they can get the, the next goal to give them a little bit of the way things are going Wrexham of course on the back of promotion they play with such freedom don't they movement is, is, is comes easy to them you know they're not worried about making mistakes Friedman can do his money disappearing can we over again I suppose he'll be learning he's, he's relatively new to management and Colin Addison will talk to us about that at half time I'm sure but and he'll be learning all the time here is uh, Dennis Lawrence to Scott Green took it well Green Green just ran straight into Jason Perry who made no attempt whatsoever to uh, play the ball and obstructed Green and that's the first yellow card of the evening yeah it doesn't surprise me actually from Jason he's, he's trying to have a go at the rest of his team because they're just opening out there we are professional foul they call it but he's he's I worry for Jason for the rest of this game well this is Darren Ferguson territory Darren Ferguson of course is out after the training ground injury so Scott Green and Lee Trundle lining up here anxious moments for Gareth Weston it's Scott Green who tries to curl it and uh, the county goalkeeper knew that was always drifting wide yeah, not a bad effort I don't think there was enough pace on it the keeper was over there and uh, watched the ball go wide yeah, they missed situation he's dead ball specialist but uh, they haven't missed him out there so far this evening leading 3-0 Lawrence Andy Murrell with him is Thomas Griffin puffs it back to just behind Paul Barrett who's come on strongly at the end of the season as he did last season and uh, the start of the campaign was in and out and suffered injury from Shepherd and wins the it. that's what he's got to do Gary Shepherd if, if he can possibly get hold of the ball with 30 or 40 yards of the Wrexham goal and when he he's got the pace to take on the big centre halves and uh, you know if he can get in that position unfortunately up to now he hasn't seen much of the ball half an hour played nearly here at the race course and a perfect evening for Wrexham so far 3-0 up to defend this corner Whitfield comes for it drops it and immediately tries to set Lee Trundle on his way unfortunately for Newport County Benton was in the way that was really a very very good uh, ball from the keeper there on the half ball he drilled it forward three Wrexham players converging on Fowler to win the ball Trundle be desperate to get on the score sheet this evening headed away by Thomas here's Benton Jim Whitley works so hard and uh, despite the fact leading 3-0 made his level best there to win back possession for Wrexham Eckhart waiting for the forward run from Rose Pajic was there first ahead of Shepherd. here's Whitley again Morel Green Morel They have missed uh, Ferguson and they I think Jim Whitley's had an excellent first half an hour scored the goal and uh, looked very very good in possession This is Davis, can he turn? He's got Pedic with him, Dennis Lawrence there as well Too much work for him He's looking for support from his partner but Dennis Lawrence took a knock, he's uh, limping slightly. Straight to Kearney, who's had a fine season, Brian Kidd. A long injury, didn't he? He's been out for a long while and uh, they've needed him at the heart of the defence. Without him, they're a different side. I think he's a leader in there. Yeah, and, uh, 
Mary at the back is, is very much the captain. Tells everybody what to do, keeps his team together. And Gareth Weston, the hero against Cardiff City in the semi-final, already beaten three times this evening. towards Collins. Paul Edwards gets there first. Here's Rose. Davis. No one there for Newport though. Barrett sets off on a run. Pedic though goes down the middle looking for Trundle. He's battling with uh, Eckhart. Trundle's there first. Trundle! Lee Trundle! Has he overdone it? Trundle! 4-0! He enjoyed that Lee Trundle. I thought for a second he'd lost possession, but you can never tell with the showman Lee Trundle. And that's another blow for Newport County as Lee Trundle slots in the fourth. Well, he did it all himself, didn't he? Won the battle with Eckhart, and then he skinned uh, Jason Perry. Got a little bit of a luck. It's a deflection off Perry's left foot, but he gets to this posi uh, position. He looks to beat him again, just takes it to his right, puts the side foot, he gets a little deflection. Takes it away from Gareth Weston in the Newport County goal, and that's 4-0. But um, he'll enjoy that, Lee Trundle, especially against those two big centre-halves on the market. Well, he is uh, very much a, a hero with the uh, race course fans, Lee Trundle. Whitley, Morell, Dennis Lawrence venturing upfield. Here's with here's with the again. Paul Edwards. Uh, it must be desperately difficult for some of the Newport County players out there. Only 33, 34 minutes played. Already 4-0 down. Well, not some of them, all of them. Ian, all of them will be, you know, they'd be bombarded, wouldn't they? Here's Paul Edwards, and you feel there's more to come. Because there'll be a few tired legs, they'll be drained. Challenge and Chris Collins. They had that desperate start, conceding such an early goal. And since then, it's been one way traffic. Carlos Edwards. On half of the uh, ground, bathed in sunshine. To the eyes of the fans. The Wrexham fans to our right on the cop. It's uh, darker away to our left in every sense amongst the Newport County supporters. A long journey up from Gwent, it'll be an even longer one back home. I think they'll have enjoyed the fact that they've got to the, the Premier Cup final, Owen, and uh, you know they're in good heart, although they look a little bit shell shocked at the moment. Well, there's a uh, familiar face, of course, in these parts. Rouab on board, Welsh. International manager Mark Hughes. Oh, I, I'm sure I once read in the Wrexham programme that at 15 he'd had a trial here at the race course and he, he showed up quite well, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'd called uh, Stephen Roberts into the uh, standby list for the trip to the United States, but Roberts not playing this evening. Paul Edwards always gives that Whitcock pace, but he's worked up and down this 
right side and Max come down the other side of the field. Shot three. Excellent running from Paul Barrett. Only Trundle to aim for, he might drop for Trundle. Trundle setting himself up for the shot. There were three Newport County defenders there in their amber shirts able to clear the ball away. Wrexham scored four in their quarter-final win at Avonlea. Four against Rill in the semi-final. They've already scored four against Newport County in the final. And they've won a corner. Chris Collins adding support down this right-hand side and uh, Lee Fowler, or Michael Fowler rather, and take this corner. Just pull one back just before half-time just to give them a bit of a lift before they go into that dressing room. It is Fowler. You see, and that's the problem. That lack of confidence, you know, making, having to make sure a delivery goes into the box to give the likes of Perry and Eckhart who have made the run forward. They've got to give them a chance. It's such a poor ball, such a letdown for the whole team when it's a sloppy ball into the near post like that. And Paul Whitfield, Welsh under 21 international, preferred this evening to uh, Christian Rogers in the absence of uh, Andy Dibble, who uh, I think was having his birthday today. I'm sure he's 38 or 39. And uh, there was a great deal of celebration in the uh, Axon dressing room prior to kickoff. Great deal of pulling of leg. And Al's touch, it's a throw. Whitley. Is Davis, Nathan Davis, Eckhart. Lawrence is there first. Whitley wins the ball back. Lawrence. Just, uh, lucky to get away with it. Hines Trundle. Carey looking into the uh, peering into the sun. It's not happening up front, of course. Nothing much to work with in terms of the uh, service being offered. Wesson under pressure, put under pressure by Collins. to the final five minutes now of the first half I suppose Ian as Rose has a chance here it's another corner for Newport and it's Lawrence thinks it should be a goal kick I suppose though the outcome of the game in terms of goals scored depends on Wrexham's attitude from now on exactly and I think they just look uh, as if their attitude is very very good indeed I think they love scoring goals so much that it's become a very pleasant habit for them Michael Fowler. Why? Why? Well, we've got the header. Alice had his runs into Ray Allen. Here's Eckhart. Davis. Well, he's batting back there, defending. See, that's the difference. Ian. It was a better ball into the box, isn't it? And if they can't clear it uh, so easily, the ball then is pushed back in to the Wrexham's defence towards their penalty box. So it keeps Newport players up the field rather than a sloppy ball. Much better cross into the box. <laughs> Apart from that one, of course. That's <laughs> not too soon. That's a goal kick. Shake of a head from Jeff Eckhart, of course, uh, against Swansea when they won 3 1. 
it's made very much a forward role that day had Billy Clark in the heart of the defence as well he's injured and uh, Eckhart played superbly that day leading the line now I bet you Dennis Smith you know would like next season to start next Saturday the way playing at the moment with all the freedom and all the goals I think he'd just want the season to continue wouldn't he, he wouldn't want the break um, because they're in such fine form at the moment well uh, we saw their last defeat in at Exeter March the 4th when they were pretty awful that day against Exeter who at the time were bottom of the league and um, that at was that time you thought you know were they promotion material but since then it's been absolutely fantastic form since then. I think they came back here and beat the league leaders at home by four goals to one. And from that day to this, really, their form has been very, very exciting. End of the season, eight consecutive victories. And should they win tonight, and uh, you have to say it looks as if they will, that'll be nine victories, which uh, equals a club record in terms of successive victories in different competitions. It's quite an achievement. Into the final couple of minutes of the first half. Here again with a strong challenge. Here's Whitley. Morel. Tries to get away from Perry. Here's Rose. <laughs> Dennis Lawrence couldn't see the ball there. <laughs> Just turned his back. <laughs> He's still finding difficulty peering into the sun. Carey has that problem now. Here's Shepard. Scott Green's with him. Shepard will try and win a corner maybe. Keeps the ball in play. Referee allows play to go on. Maxim's defenders stood and watched. Here's Davis. Wins another corner. Well, Freddie, and you put County, you know, they've kept at it, and they? They've They'll try to get forward when the uh, opportunity arises. Well, they're uh, leading Wrexham in terms of corners. And of course, being uh, taken apart in terms of goals at the moment. Fowler with this corner. Rose. And it's out for a goal kick. Into the final minute. Uh, what does Peter Nicholas tell his players? Well, he's just going to try to, to, to keep them going. I think uh, it damaged limitation, you know, if their players walk off this pitch, six, seven or eight goals, that will be devastating for, for the team. But uh, he just tried to sell them to keep them going, be proud, pride will come into it a lot, and, um, you know, try to get themselves a goal, try to get them something from the game. But I think that first perhaps mistake from Gareth Wesson who was a bit unsure ball was going a yard and a half wide it's important for Newport to get that first goal wasn't it or to delay the first goal for Wrexham so frustration would would uh, happen if it hasn't happened the first goal was early Wrexham are on a roll and there's no stopping them and I thought he'd done well in getting an early feel of the ball <laughs> yeah <laughs> there we are a minute of added time is to be played and I think it will be a great relief for the Newport County players just to get into that dressing room. Here's Sundle. Again, showing his skills. Morel. Whitley once more in support. Scott Green wants the ball. And as Lawrence comes forward, Whitley. Steve Benton in strongly. Shepard by himself gets behind Carey. Lawrence comes across. Shepard does well, he's got support in the middle. Well, we always said he'd be a threat, Gary Shepard, and he showed there what he can do. Yeah, it's the run is the pace up against the two centre halves. They won't like that. Anything in the air, not a problem for the two six footers, but this sort of an effort from Gary Shepard, we know what he can do. He's just a powerful boy as well. Low centre of gravity, very difficult to knock off the ball. This could well be the last kick of the first half. We've had the minute of added time played. And it's missed by everyone. Out for a goal kick. And referee Ray Ellingham draws to a close. 
first 45 minutes which will be of great satisfaction and delight to the Wrexham supporters and players who are already celebrating promotion coming onto the field there's the man who scored the first goal after only 90 seconds Dennis Lawrence Andy Morell made it to Jim Whitley three and Lee Trundle four so what's the view from the Newport County manager Peter Nicholas he's with Rob Phillips Peter what can you say to your side at half time we've got to score five goals been serious we've got to score five goals end of the day Lines was killed us for the first goal I'm not sure if it's in or not you guys are no better no Lines was killed the game was first but we get bad goals away to be honest uh, they've played excellent over XL, that's why I mean, they have been doing that to other teams in Division 3 haven't they oh we know that I mean you know we, we weren't going to come in and just shut up shop and uh, to damage limitations we came here to uh, give it a good game we've got a best shot lads have done alright we just get bad goals away so you haven't given up you've got to score five we've got to score five Peter thanks very much cheers Well, the game's supposed to last 90 minutes. This one lasted 90 seconds of the contest. Dennis Lawrence got the nod for goal one. Whether he actually supplied the final touch, we don't know. Andy Morell certainly scored the second, his 39th of the season. Carlos Edwards doing the damage for goal three. Jim Whitley putting it over the line. And then a great solo effort. Lee Trundle on his own. 4-0 at half time. And Gareth Wesson has had a torrid time. Very, very tough on Newport County to have gone behind so early in the game and die that from that point on they struggled. Well, Wrexham at their best. They've actually scored 85 goals this season against cold time professionals. This is Wrexham. Not only have they got pace off the ball, the movement of the ball is superb. And they're actually taking turns from midfield to make inward runs there. And you've got four different goal scorers. And uh, what a fabulous start. And it was uphill from Newport from there on in. Colin, have you been bewitched by Wrexham's performance? Not at all. For a promotion winning side, we're watching a very, very good side get possession, keep possession, knock the ball around. Lots of penetration, lots of good movement. No, I'm not surprised by uh, Wrexham's performance. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a treat to see a lot of good attacking football and some excellent fi finishing. The corner statistic was incredible, Mark, but it, it, it has been very one-sided, hasn't it? Well, it has been. You know, you're loath to be critical of Newport, Andy, because they did fantastic to get here. But you have to be perfectly honest and say it's a bit of a mismatch, isn't it? Wrexham are far superior mm. in all areas. I actually feel genuinely sorry for for some of the Newport players. You know, that, that it's been so one-sided. Like you say, the corners, Newport have, have managed to get advantage, but that was in the last couple of minutes. It was 46 minutes until Gary Shepard had a ball to, to chase after. Shots off target, shots on target. They, they've dominated the stats and obviously the goals, but I feel a little bit sorry for some of the Newport players. Two in particular I feel sorry for who were good pros, Jason Perry and Jeff Eckhard. They're really being made to look awful, aren't they? And perhaps it's one game too many for them to, if they're going to play against the calibre of Trundle and Morel every week. Because I, I guess I, I, yeah, if they could still cope with players like Morel and Trundle, they'd still be playing in the Football League, wouldn't they? Well, of course, I think the fourth goal when we come to it is a classic example because ten years ago, Jeff Eckhard would have murdered the ball in the air and the ball would have been in the other half of the pitch, but he didn't do that and it, it's a little bit sorry for them players, but you've got to give him what they can. Die. Um Gareth Wesson under the spotlight as early as 90 seconds when he gave that corner away did he need to I don't think he did well it's actually a, a very nervous one and the fact that uh, he's got his angles wrong and he, he thinks he's got away with it he's gone across and oh, oops do I touch it don't I he's lost his post and he does touch the ball and uh, from the resulting corner again he's lost his his position because Lawrence comes in late he should have punched that at least made contact with Lawrence it's far too easy for him to to head towards the goal and uh, it's a very nervous start by the goalkeeper and therefore that spread then through the rest of the team. It's so hard to know who to give the goal to Colin. It is, I think it comes off the defender actually. Off Bender, comes back and hits he him. Won't want hits it. him. No, he won't want it, but uh, I, I think, think he might get I think it was, I think was him with his right foot. It might have been. But Peter Nicholas close. touched on it there, Ollie. They'd given bad goals away. That was a bad goal, not so much the, the mistake by the goalkeeper. There's some fundamental problems in that. If you look at it here, they're, they're marking spaces. You've got a man in front there who's doing nothing. You've got a man on the edge of the six yard box. Dennis Lawrence comes in. The man on the six yard box should now tighten him down so he cannot come off the goalkeeper. He doesn't do that. I think it's Nathan Davis. When the ball comes in, then Dennis Lawrence 
Armstrong only has to take a step to his left. He's up, he heads it. As he takes a step to the left, he should bump into the player. They should trap him between the goalkeeper and the marker. So there were some fundamental defensive lapses there that you can put right on a training ground. Colin's second goal uh, for 2-0, only 12 minutes gone here when uh, Andy Morrell got his 39th of the season. Uh, do you put this down to defending or do you put it down to Morrell's skill and finish? Put it down to his skill and finish here. We'll see as he goes through. It's, uh, it's, it's great movement when he picks up the ball and... Um, here he goes now, he picks it up, good position, he knows what he's doing here, plays, little, plays a little one-two, he's fortunate off the Newport defender, but it's a great little lob, superb volley, just had a look, gets his head up, keeper's got no chance, that's a good finish, and I believe he knew what he was doing, he's doing it again, he plays it off the defender, Jeff Eckhart, it bounces, and good vision, the balance. it's the balance, and the balance, it's it, great composure. It's incredible that, isn't it, Craig Falkenbridge not left the club, I don't know whether Andy Morrell would have had much of an well, opportunity. Precisely, and people forget about him, because he's a late start, and really this is the first season he's had a full run and he's grown in stature you'll always battle he'll push he'll get a lot of injuries as well because he's that brave but I tell you what he never ever gives up and it's a good partnership Carlos Edwards has been tricky during he's the first half he's been tricky on the ball he's also been tricky off the ball I mean he's got pace I mean Whitley picks the ball I pay pushes it through and with the pace that this boy's got, he runs off the ball, thank you, nobody's there, but he's got time to look up, pulls it back, and Jim Whitley again, the timing of the run into the box, superb pullback. Carlos can be criticised sometimes throughout the season because he hasn't, you have to but remember, that's quality. You have to remember at this stage of the game, they're 2-0 up, Rex, and the game is over. And the two players, really, the application and attitude to get forward into goal-scoring positions and be positive is first class. Yeah. Both the Edwards boys have been very exciting, given them a lot of width. This is, this is where, I, where I picked out here. When they intercept, the new ball have caused a problem. Whitley picks it up. To the right of him is Edwards. Don't forget they're 2-0 up here. Look at Carlos Edwards. He wants to get in beyond and cause a threat. Once he does that, he sucks the new ball players in towards Morel's run. Jim Whitley hasn't intercepted it and stood on the halfway line. He's followed it up. That's a 60-yard sprint that to get the glory. They're already 2-0 up. And I think that's the problem that new board have, have been faced with. Wrexham have been first class there. That attitude has been spot on and they're far better players. I think some of them are out of contract as well and as you said they really want to get on the score sheet four different sco scorers great what about the boy Lee Trundle now he got the fourth Colin and, and, and again made it himself pretty much like Andy Morrell had done earlier yes there's a long ball play through and he challenging his Jeff Eckhart again he wins the battle the physical battle does well shows composure gets the break takes it again onto Jason Perry I think it just nicks off Jason Perry's foot but he's strong here very aggressive comes inside does well shows good composure again and gets the little break did all strikers need but like, like uh, Mark had just said you know a few years ago Jeff Eckel would have won the header there would have, would, would have come and attacked the ball and knocked it back that's but the one for me that, yeah. that made you realise that yes. you know Jason and Jeff have been good pros but tonight from their point of view they just can't handle it because between the two of them ten years ago he would have ended up in row X there Trundle he wouldn't have had a kick but I think we're seeing a very very good Wrexham side tonight a promotion with his side playing with confidence knocking the ball around they're enjoying it we said they were going to enjoy it Dennis wants that and he's, he's getting that it's a right. very very good performance we're all enjoying it and we've got the second half to come live as well Wrexham leading Newport County by four goals to nil at half time playing tonight for the newest trophy in Welsh football on Sunday Cumbran and Barry Town play for the oldest People are expecting us to um, to go and put on a performance, to play well and to win the game, and that's what I'm expecting. I like their style, I like the way they play, and um, but I also like to see them get beaten in the game, so we'll, we'll try on Sunday. You know, a lot of people are telling me it's, it's meant to be that Combine are going to win the cup, uh, but I don't believe that. Be tough, it'll be tough, and I'm sure they're full of confidence. Uh, they've had a great run, you know, since Christmas. So, uh, as I said, 90 minutes, cup final, anything can happen. We're live from Stevenage Park in Athlete from 20 to midday on Sunday. It's an early start for everyone. Uh, Barry Town against Cumbran Town, this year's Welsh Cup final. Here at the race course though, just about ready to go with the second half here 
Wrexham lead in Newport County 4-0 mark. Uh, your old mate Peter Nicholas says simple, they've got to score five. That's not what he'd have said to his players, surely. No, well, what he would say, he, he'd be interested now in just looking at the second half in its entirety. Can we draw or win the second half? He knows in his heart of hearts the game's finished, it's over. It was over at a contest when the second goal went in. So he'll be trying to G his players up and saying, look, let's play the next 45 minutes. Can we get a draw the next 45 minutes and come out with some pride? From Wrexham's point of view, they'll do exactly the same because their attitude right throughout the season and this competition in particular has been spot on. So they'll be going for more goals. Nice one, guys. Um, more from you afterwards. Let's just sit back. Enjoy the second half as we rejoin our commentary team, Ian Walsh. And uh, first of all, it's got to be Ingo and Hughes. Thank you, Ollie. Let's go down pitch side straight away where Rob Phillips is with the Wrexham manager Dennis Smith. Dennis, I imagine that was one of your easier half-time team talks. Yes, I just they've just got to keep it going. Uh, you know, be professional, make sure we keep the clean sheet. I mean, they've they've come at us, but when teams come at us, it leaves space, and we're quite good. We're, we're quick and we break, and we give people problems like that. But uh, the game's not over yet, and we want to make sure it is. And so, if we go about it the, in the second half the way we've done the first half, then I'll be happy. The attitude has been absolutely spot on. Yeah, they, they're working hard. They're closing down all over. A couple of them have had a a little been got at a little bit at half time because I'm not particularly pleased with everybody but most of them have done the job you're a hard man to please Dennis thanks very much cheers oh Dennis Smith there who uh, Ian Walsh has done a tremendous job here with Wrexham well you can see that it's a uh, very very experienced manager you know he knows this 45 minutes like Mark Hazel was saying the managers knows the out know the outcome of this game but the important thing is that as a professional Dennis Smith has wanted to keep them going for 90 minutes so it's Newport County who are defending the goal away to our right occupied by the uh, Exxon supporters on the cup and 4-0 uh, down and really playing for pride in this second half for Wrexham well maybe looking to add to that uh, four goal tally straight away ball played in oh that's wide by Paul Barrett what an excellent move though and uh, Dennis Smith even there enjoyed that applauding it was tremendous football and could so easily have been 5-0 pace movement good angles of running great awareness of players around you and yet another midfield player getting himself into the box we need to see a bit more of that uh, so and look off the post as well that really was unlucky from Barrett well uh, you might need to uh, or want to see a bit more I'm sure Newport County don't want to see more of uh, <laughs> that type of football but it uh, really was uh, for a wider audience maybe seeing why Wrexham as Andy Morell plays that ball looking for Paul Edwards a lot has been said about Wrexham and uh, they haven't gone about it this season boasting about what they're going to do they've actually produced the goods on the field of play under this uh, man Dennis Smith and uh, maybe a wider audience this evening just appreciating why so many plaudits have come their way in terms of their style of football yeah and we mustn't forget that the, uh, Wrexham are in the second division next season and uh, with performances like this they'll be a quite a capable side and they will surprise a lot of teams here is Carlos Edwards running at uh, Steve Benton Edwards gets a bit of luck gets the ricochet chance to cross Morel, it came off uh, Jeff Eckhart. Maybe that was goal bound, but uh, Eckhart got in the way. Hey! Peter Nicholas won't be happy. You know, uh, Fowler, by Fowler, just coming away with the ball and needlessly giving possession away, and all of a sudden, Wrexham are back on the attack. Here is Pedic. Inside Benton for Carlos Edwards with his pace again. Trundle's in the middle. Here is Trundle! Well, they could easily have scored three goals in, what, the first two minutes of the second half. I think that team talk and those two or three that we had a go at at half-time, and I can't work out which they are, but really set them going, isn't it? Uh, Must have been Lee Jones on the bench or something like that. <laughs> I was thinking that in the first half. If Trundle or Morel go off, they've got Lee Jones to come on as well, and he's, you know, over 20 yards, he's quicker than the pair of them. Well, according to uh, Danny Smith, he's the best goal scorer at the club so <laughs> I don't know what that makes Andy Morrell with 39 this season but um, Liverpool County need to get back into this game in terms of the way Wrexham has started the second half here's Carlos Edwards 
Dundle. Tried to take that ball through to... Tries to curl it! Oh, Sundle loves doing that, and he scored some spectacular goals. Just off target there. I'm, I'm glad this ball didn't go through Jason Perry's legs. I'm just... Oh, this is just after that. Hopefully we can cut it back a little bit. This is a good effort. Good technique. Um, but if we are able to see that, I'm just glad that... When this ball goes in here, it drives at the heart of the defence. One, to watch this. He tries to push through his legs there. I'm just delighted for Jason Perry that it didn't happen. Exxon have started the second half on fire in terms of attacking. And uh, there's no let-up in the, in the movement and in the pressure. Nathan Davis unlucky with the challenge. He's fouling Scott Green. The season which began. With an away draw, Scunthorpe. And a bad injury to Wayne Phillips. He is with Rob Phillips this evening, pitch side. And uh, it's been a promotion winning season. And looks like being a promotion and cup double. Is green. Well, out. Carlos Edwards takes the ball. Benton's with him. Carlos Edwards easily away from him. Keeper's ball. Dennis Lawrence. And the free kick is given. the uh, challenge on Jim Whitley he's become a, a favourite as well Dennis so it all comes with a success of course because I can remember back in the early days every time Dennis Lawrence touched the ball the fans were on his back but shows what success is here's Trundle setting himself up for a shot and uh, that was an important challenge from Eckhart and Weston clears Fouling uh, Jeff Eckert. Scored Wrexham's fourth goal. Here's Fowler. Yeah. Wrexham have committed eight fouls to uh, New Plus Five. Not too many fouls in 50 minutes, 13 in all. Morel's touch. Trundle got there first, finds Carlos Edwards. Ball just won't drop for him. There's a lot to do here. There's Morel, all oh, rather tight. Scott Green. Some space now from, for Jim Whitley. Paul Edwards. Collins comes across to make the challenge. Scott Green. Trundle back to Scott Green. Again, it's Eckhart who's in the way. Last ditch defending, but effective. Oh, Steve Benton is about to be substituted, and uh, Mark Dickerson, a prolific goal scorer with Llanelli in the League of Wales over the years, and uh, so non-league international, is uh, about to come on. He suffered a bad cruise injury still battling to regain his fitness that substitution is imminent here's Rose Carey who comes across Davis Carey wins a throw and that does allow Peter Nicholas to make his substitution who's had a difficult time against the likes of Carlos Edwards uh, I think that could be it to spot on there uh, he's just been 
so frustrating for him and uh, obviously Dixon will go up front will probably push into a 4-4-2 now I would think or 4-3-3 maybe but that just might give Wrexham a little bit more space going forward it's not as if they had enough already but 4-0 they lead and here's Paul Edwards just clearing the way Newport County fans still in pretty good voice despite the scoreline and they've won a free kick for Omar Dickerson is on the edge of the penalty area so too is Rose Eckhart just a touch from Neil Davis as Carlos Edwards was there first and it's a, it's a Newport County throw they've uh, managed to withstand the early pressure in the second half they just get back into the game in terms of possession here's Collins to Shepherd, that's the battle of Edwards away by Carey. Here's Scott Green. Some space now from Carlos Edwards, Morel and Trundle up front with him. It's into the back of Morel, but he's still quick enough to get there first. Ahead of Perry. Green. Edwards drifts inside. Shepard not giving up the chase. That's good to see, isn't it, from a, a young goalkeeper showing that level of confidence. But it is very much a part of the game now, the goalkeeper with the ball at your feet, and it's all back to you. Morel is offside. Well, Wrexham have brought uh, Chris Collins out into their left full-back position, obviously to try to to stop Carlos Edwards but uh, if you were Dennis Smith as a coach you'd be trying to get the ball out to Paul Edwards on the other side see if he could do a bit of damage out down there Davis one of the few direct efforts they've had on goal Newport County, Neil Davis 28 year old former Aston Villa player Able to keep the shot down to really trouble Paul Whitfield. Yeah, not a ball that Peter Nix would really like, the high ball up front, but Newport do win it. Not a bad strike, difficult angle, but uh, I'm just sure that uh, Neil would thank the opportunity, uh, or be thankful of the opportunity to have a go at goal. Might uh, think of making a couple of substitutions now. Could be our mark. Maybe try to give everybody in the squad a game. Tundle. Carlos Edwards. Tundle wants the ball again, but Carlos Edwards just overruns it. Does he plays it to Scott Green? Edwards was caught. Here's Tundle. Whitley. Paul Edwards. Chance to run out Andrew Thomas two with him and uh, managed to do the job effectively I think you know I think Carlos Edwards could be a revelation in the second division next year I think he's got the pace he's had a number of seasons now where he's settled into the way of life and everything and I think um, given the opportunity and given possession you know his pace is frightening here's Jim Whitley I fancy a shot again it's blocked here is Dickerson. Fowler's adding support. Dickerson running at Carey. Too many red shirts there for him. Here's Paul Edwards. And they're still battling gamely, Newport County. They haven't given up. They know the, the game as a result is beyond them. 
but they're showing considerable pride in the shirt in the second half. Dennis Lawrence to take this uh, throw, one of three Trinidad players of course at Wrexham, Hector Sam is the other, offside against Barrett. Uh, he was at least uh, two or three yards offside there, early run, just needed to arc his run, he was a little bit too straight with his run, he needed to bend his run slightly. Full of energy, full of energy for Barrett at the end of the season when they've needed him. It's been excellent. Well, Barrett just set Carlos Edwards on his way. Here is Edwards. Trundle is in the middle. It'll be towards Trundle and it comes off Perry. Again, good running from Jim Whitley in the, the heart of uh, midfield. And Paul Edwards out on the other side. Sprinted to get into the penalty box. Space for Paul Edwards wide on the left hand side, but uh, Carey decides safety first. played a quarter of an hour in the second half and uh, no addition to the scoreline no doubt where the trophy's going it's coming back to the race course with Carlos Edwards Morel Barrett excellent ball brilliant ball here's Carlos Edwards time to pick out uh, Trundle but it's straight to Perry yeah, you're right, what a ball that was, outside the right foot from Paul Barrett, down the channel, superb. Hedger, he's teeing it up for Trundle, looks for the bounce, Trundle, loves this position, Lee Trundle, forced too wide for his liking I suppose, Edwards. Away by Perry, Maxim's first corner in this second half. They've only had two. And if it's not coming down the right side, it goes down the left side. First goal came from a corner, of course. Keeper comes and just tries to parry it, manages to get there. Carlos Edwards. Against Rose. Beat himself if anything there, Carlos Edwards. He's had a few problems with the uh, corner kicks when they've come in. First led to a goal and managed under pressure just to get the ball away from Carey that time around. Scott Green. Now oh, there's space, plenty of space here for Paul Edwards. Andrew Thomas is in front of him. Looking for Morel, the way by Collins, sensible thing to do because Paul Barrett was hovering behind. Maxim, you just feel just stepping up a gear once more. Well, uh, I'm going down the left-hand side a little bit more as well with, uh, with Paul Edwards. But they can attack from all angles, they've got so much pace and ability. It's um, There's a massive gulf between the two teams. Scott Green looking for Carey here's Scott Green Trundle takes over responsibility again fed it through to Morel the challenge has another chance Morel good save by Gareth Weston well, I'm delighted for the youngster on that occasion. It was a good save at the near post. 
lovely little reverse pass from Trundle, great skill, gets a second bite of the cherry, head down, good power, near post, keeper gets a good touch on it. That'll help his confidence. Green's corner played short this time to uh, Carlos Edwards, floats it in, Pedic is there, doesn't score often. Was on the end of that cross. Yeah, good ball into the near post. Coming away from the goalkeeper. Good touch from uh, Pedic, but not able to get high enough to direct it on goal. It's just worth noting well. You put out on the back end of a 4 0 scoreline at the moment. It's uh, nothing to be ashamed of. Real lost 4 0 here then. Carlisle six conceded six and Cambridge conceded five. So Wrexham have been rampant at the race course. Tundle as well to find Paul Edwards. Against Thomas, he's away from him. Tundle Morel and Barrett in the middle. Morel seems to be taken out of the game by Jason Paddy, but uh, not for the first time. Referee Ray Allen was right there though. who was uh, held back it doesn't matter but um, good for Lee Tundle who would have been in for his second goal and Wrexham's fifth Carlos Edwards just a header too powerful. And the attitude, just look at the, uh, his face there, Andy Morell. I think the attitude of the Wrexham players has been spot on tonight. You know, 4 0 up, and look at him still closing down, still arguing with the referee, still having a go with his teammates to knock the ball into him at a, a better height. You know, it's all good stuff. It would be great for him personally to reach 40 for the season. Here's Paul Edwards. Yeah. The keepers punches it straight to Carlos Edwards, who overruns the ball. Yeah. I think the the, the the big keeper should stay on his line a little bit more from crosses. I think he's built for shot stopping, isn't he, more than coming out and attacking the ball. They were lucky here that Carlos Edwards overran the ball. Gareth Weston in, of course, for Pat Mountain, who uh, played against Swansea in the quarter-final, but then suffered a bad injury. Weston came in and did very well against Cardiff City. Here's Trundle. Eckhart's with him. Trundle. Six from Trundle. Carlos Edwards didn't drop for him. 
just one way gifts the other away by uh, Jason Perry. Well, they're looking very tired now. Uh, Jason Perry, obviously they've already taken off the defenders, they can't afford to take off. Anyway, Jason Perry, Jeff Eckhart, they'll be feeling it now. Scott Green plays the corner again, short to Carlos Edwards. Edwards to Trundle. Trundle. Here's Scott Green. Green. Should be. Oh, it is. It's Sean Pedrick. Oh. What an unlikely scorer. And I think all the Wrexham players are delighted for young Pedrick. Well, the central defenders have been scoring regularly of late. Brian Carey, Dennis Lawrence, and now it's Sean Pedrick. And that's 5 0. And this is where the gulf between the two sides, absolute massive. This is like a five a side goal. Could have scored himself. He passes across square to Pedrick, and it's the simplest of finishes from him. But uh, there are a lot of tired defenders out there, and here's the movement. You're not getting tight enough to them. And all of a sudden, that extra yard has. Uh, Given the simple chance to do Pedic, and he'll be he'll be delighted. And uh, there's a, a delighted father, well Pedic, the physio. I can remember seeing um, Darren Ferguson score a goal here against uh, Exeter City, and uh, as soon as the ball went in the back of the net, his father, Sir Alex, was sitting in the stand, and he immediately got onto the phone, beaming with a smile, obviously telling someone maybe that uh, his son had scored a goal but there's a delighted goal scorer Sean Pedrick 5-0 to Wrexham meanwhile Newport County have made a substitution Chris Rogers young Chris Rogers uh, who's come through the youth system at Newport County Peter Nicholas has high hopes for him he's come on in place of Neil Davis Rogers by the way he's wearing 15 and he's immediately in the action and he wins a corner, does he? It's a throw off Carlos Edwards. 20 minutes to go. Jim Jones, Peter Nicholas' assistant. There is Rogers. Angle is very tight, straight to Whitfield. Yeah, I think all the coaching goes out of the window now, doesn't it? changing things, maybe just giving a, a couple of the youngsters a little bit of an experience, what's it like to play in a cup final which way is this free kick going drop ball and it's uh, Whitley and Rose Green without looking knew that Paul Edwards would be there Nathan Davis sticks with Edwards. Here's Green. Uh, makes a bit of a hash of that. Dennis Lawrence battling with Shepherd. Straight to Dickerson. Let's go down to uh, pitch side and uh, join Rob Phillips. Well, Wayne, uh, that last goal was the most popular at the race course, certainly on the bench with Mel Pedrick. Yeah, I played alongside Mel, and he was never that composed when he had the chance in the box, so uh, he'll be very made up for Sean to get a goal on, on, a, on a special night for him. Uh, how many more can Wrexham get? Um, if they want goals, they're there for the taking. Um, it's important they finish the game on a high note, and I'm sure they can up the tempo if they want, and uh, go on and get a couple more. Just wish you were out there, don't you? It would be nice, Rob. I may even have scored myself. Carlos Edwards with the effort, Rob Phillips there with Wayne Phillips. And uh, every time they actually do attack, you feel that they could add to the tally. That time he just skipped his shot rather. He scored some spectacular goals, mind uh, Carlos Edwards, towards the end of the season, coming in from that right hand side, edge of the penalty box, and uh, he scored some crackers, but just pulled it wide on that occasion. Quickly, looking for Morel. Carlos Edwards is throw to uh, Trundle. This is where Trundle loves to have possession. Wants to curl it! Oh, Lee 
Sunday. He's so good at that. And it's 6-0. And that's what and why the fans here absolutely adore Lee Sundle. Nothing on, spins, side foot, 6-0, easy as you like. Watch this skill, does it all the time. Just these that half a yard away from the defender and he just bends it into the bottom corner. Giving the keeper no chance, but this is where he's at his most dangerous. Watch this for a bit of skill. Just moves the defender to the side, gets half a yard and there's a tremendous bend on that and then he milks the, the applause and that's fantastic <laughs> I think he said that's magic that's magic and we agree with you Lee poor Gareth Weston could do nothing and it's uh, a substitution by the way Paul Barrett is uh, going off and uh, it's Stephen Thomas who's coming on to the middle of the park for the last uh, 16 minutes or so of the season here oh well, that's uh, two sixes for Wrexham in recent weeks 6-1 against Carlisle and uh, I'm sure Mark Hughes as well must have enjoyed Lee Trundle's goal and he's most probably turning to David Collins and saying are you sure he's not Welsh <laughs> and then Mr Collins is saying have you listened to him <laughs> he's got the most scouse accent that I've ever, ever heard in my life there's Paul Edwards of course signed for 50,000 by previous manager Brian Flynn from Rill made an immediate impact here at the race course and uh, they're queuing up now Carey's beaten by Eckhart this of course is a record score for a final here's uh, Trundle again where's he going this time Scott Green it's for Carlos Edwards is it forward looking for it well intention is uh, was through to Dennis Lawrence this would be an even more popular couple well what a contrast there despair all over the face of Jason Perry and delight beaming face of Dennis Lawrence look you just got two centre halves playing a one two with each other that just shows how much control that the Wrexham have got in this game two centre halves played a 1-2 at the edge of the box and there's another one Ryan Carey flicking it on for Trundle Trundle that's uh, high and wide this time We're certainly uh, ending the season with a bit of a flourish well I'm sure if Peter Nicholas had a white towel he would be throwing that in at this point in time because and it, you have to say this is a uh, Trundle trying to, to bend the ball into the top corner. And what I'd like to say is that we're talking so much about Wrexham, aren't we? And, and of course it's there to be seen by everybody. And it is a concern that we're not saying too much about Newport County, but unfortunately on the night they're just not offering anything. <laughs> has been very one-sided Fowler is being replaced by Alan Stevenson number 16 and uh, you're quite right Ian it, because it hasn't been from the first moment it hasn't been much of a contest in the end and I want to be positive and the positives have come from Wrexham and there's been a massive golfing class this evening They're absolutely you've got a team Wrexham playing on such a high look at the pace of these boys and the and the movement but all to the Newport fans for, for coming up and it is a cup final at the end of the day and, and uh, they've played their part but they've known from the first five or ten minutes that there was uh, going to be a no hope situation Here's Scott Green owns himself a free kick again in a good attacking position as far as Wrexham are concerned they beat uh, Merthyr here 8-0 didn't they when Andy Morell scored 7 and that's taken quickly and just uh, past the post and I don't think the goalkeeper was too prepared for that as Lee Trundle took it quickly Sean Holmes I think will come on for Wrexham and it's Paul Edwards 
and uh, as a standing ovation for Paul Edwards he's achieved a lot this season and Lee Jones is coming on and it's Scott Green going off double substitution for exit not a bad threesome is it Sundle, Jones and Morell yeah, Andy Morell got a, a knock on the ankle when he went in for a challenge with uh, Jason Perry and he's just limping a little bit but again another couple of goals for him and he will end the competition as the top scorer so he'll want to stay on just to mention uh, more football that's coming up on BBC Wales television I'll just wait for Gary Shepherd. Shepherd! smile to the face of Peter Nicholas great delight for Gary Shepherd and I think just showing what Gary Shepherd is capable of we've seen it earlier on in the competition and that's brought some delight for those suffering supporters I suppose in the evening it's been a long journey up but um, that makes it a bit more worthwhile yeah it's a good finish saw the keeper at the near post went to lob it with his left foot I think he's injured himself in the process as well good effort he hooks it back across the face of goal fortunately for him it goes in the top corner that's fantastic something for the fans to cheer about and uh, Peter Nicholas is saying to his management uh, team down there only five more to go uh, Gary Shepherd delighted and uh, let's just have a look at the uh, face of Peter Nicholas but uh, Gary Shepherd, as Ian Walsh said, injured in the process. Uh, just over ten and a half minutes to go. And it's Spitty the dog, the club mascot, still enjoying the occasion despite the scoreline. Just a chance uh, as those Newport County supporters celebrate the goal. Nothing more than a consolation, but. Uh, Uh, credit to them trailing 6-0 still to persevere to keep on going and to uh, manage to score the goal yeah, we saw a couple of glimpses didn't we in the first half of balls over the top where Gary uh, Shepard's pace would take him into good positions and uh, you could see what he does when he gets those opportunities just to mention the football coming up on BBC Wales on Sunday there's the Welsh Cup final between Barry Town and Cumbrian Town and then the final international match of the season which is uh, in May and it's between uh, Wales and the USA in San Jose you can see highlights of that game on the Tuesday evening and there's Brian Carey trying to get in on the act two goals against Carlisle, one against Cambridge and the uh, last home match is here in the league into the last ten minutes of the season here at the race course and Wrexham leading 6-1 there's uh, April County's goal scorer Gary Shepherd, encouraged by uh, the goal still going and wins the corner says a lot for Shepherd the way he's applied himself still going very much a lonely figure up front but has scored the goal and is looking for a second and the Newport County fans all credit to them in good voice despite the scoreline Jason Perry would have yeah. loved to have seen that ball in the back of the net wouldn't he yeah, but he's thinking now it's a long way back <laughs> to get into position all credit to them as, uh, as the boys were saying at half time you know, they've been good pros throughout their careers in their 30s, mid-30s now, the pair of them. and They've seen how the game has changed even now with the pace and movement from this Wrexham team. And more pace being shown here by Carlos Edwards. Edwards. But uh, Chris Collins stuck to his task. Lee Jones looking for Thomas, two of the substitutes for Wrexham. Frustrating season for Lee Jones. Great things expected of him, but uh, suffered a lot once more with injuries. Not helped by the form of Andy Morell either. Here's Carlos Edwards. Pedic. 
Aykat gets the better of Trundle. Here is Jones. Yes, Newport County fans just taunting the Rex and fans. They're the ones making the noise. They're the uh, travelling support, and they're the ones 6 1 down. has to name his uh, man of the match in a few minutes. Who to choose from tonight, I would imagine. Here's Shepherd. Blocked by Dennis Lawrence. He's proved that he's a bit of a handful, Gary Shepherd. Morel. Collins sticking to his task. Stevenson. Sean Holmes. Well, the captain bundled off the ball by uh, Brian Carey. team by the way came up uh, last night the Newport County players made an occasion made an event of the whole thing stayed at the Bryn Howell Hotel in Stangothen that would bring back memories for yourself and Peter Nicholas here Welsh when the Welsh team used to stay there when Mike England was manager lovely part of the world good golf course here's Rose Here is the first, here's Shepherd. Straight to Thomas though, Whitley. Fouled by Shepherd. Here's Whitley. to the final five minutes and Sean Holmes has possession and so Newport fans who are making the noise Wesson and not the best clearance Thomas Fitley Jones might just have been offside but the pass was misplaced anyhow yeah, he was off the touch on it sometimes for me Lee Jones goes in there forward position slightly too early I think he's got so much pace he can afford to delay his run a fraction and he'll still win uh, the race for the ball Perry was in quickly Collins and Trundle Edwards. Carlos Edwards drifting away, it falls for Trundle. And, uh, <laughs> I thought he'd done a good pass and played it straight to uh, Chris Rogers. Well, they kept supporting their side be hoping for better things in the league next season when uh, of course they'll have the small matter of a, a Welsh derby against Smithford who have won promotion this season and well under Andy Beatty at Penadaran Park Uh, 
sending the game on the attack. Here's Dickerson. Looking for the second goal. So no real support there for Alan Stevenson. Poor Whitfield beaten once by Gary Shepherd. Here's Trundle beaten by Jeff Eckert, but uh, Trundle just uh, backing into uh, Jeff Eckert. Here's Thomas. That's a throw to uh, Wrexham. Uh, Ian, your nomination for man of the match tonight? Well, you could pick quite a few of the Wrexham players I think Carlos Edward has been outstanding Jim Whitley in midfield has, has kept things together but for me it's got to be Lee Trundle up front I think he's been a handful from the word go he scored two excellent goals especially the second goal and um, I tell you afterward Jason Perry and Jeff Eckhart won't have liked playing against him tonight this was a superb technique our technical finish he was fantastic and uh, he's shown great appetite for the game tonight, but it could have been one of maybe three or four Wrexham players. Here's Carlos Edwards. Two minutes of added time to be played. Pedic. And uh, no doubt, that's the deserved winners of the Premier Cup. Quickly, even in the last minute, throwing himself into the challenge. And... Uh, for County's time might come again but this season and this evening has definitely belonged to Wrexham two minutes of added time just confirmation to be played here's Chris Rogers for Newport and Sean Pedgick just makes the clearance scorer of Wrexham's of one of Wrexham's goals into the uh, time added on for stoppages and 6-1 uh, massive golf in class in the end Ian, but uh, tremendous season for, for Wrexham yeah and you must say a good season for Newport County as well you know uh, at their level but the gulf between the two sides absolutely massive tonight and you can't afford to concede sloppy goals thought there might be another one going in there and it was a poor start, a couple of mistakes, basic mistakes at the back for Newport early on, and the game was all over as a contest, and that's just given the Wrexham players the confidence, and to me, the pace, the movement, the appetite is, is as good now, I'm sure, as it was at the start of the season, so all credit to Wrexham, all credit to Dennis Smith and his coaching staff, uh, you know, a really good, positive match to finish the season with. Of course, this is the type of game or occasion that Newport County will be looking for again in the future when they'll be hoping to regain league status. But credit to their supporters away to our left who are still in good voice, still singing, dancing despite the scoreline. They've enjoyed the occasion. Here's Trundle looking for a hat-trick. Jim Whitley into the final 20 seconds. Whitley to Thomas. No way forward. Whitley again. Holmes. And that is the end of the match. And maybe after it's Lee Trundle who holds the ball in his hand and has the final kick as well. Jason Perry's face sums it all up. There is the other extreme. The delight of Lee Trundle, scorer of two goals, as Wrexham have emphatically won this final by six goals to one. Andy Morell, 39 for the season for him. Dennis Lawrence opened the scoring. Morell made it 2-0. Jim Whitley with a third. There were two from Trundle. And Sean Pedgick, an unlikely scorer. And Andy Morell, what a season for him. What a season for Wrexham. The great occasion too for Newport County, who played their part despite the scoreline. I just wonder 
is uh, this the last time we might see Andy Morell at the race course in a Wrexham shirt? Who knows? There's a lot of negotiation to be done between now and the new season. But tonight, it's all about the success in the Cup. Jim Whitley and Scott Green all played their part in what, in the end, has been a convincing and emphatic victory. Jason Perry, last time he played here for a Welsh club, Cardiff City won, totally different story this evening. Final score here at the race goes, Wrexham have won the FAW Premier Cup once more with an emphatic victory by six goals to one. And Di Davis, Wrexham representative on the panel tonight. Well, the fans came to a party, the players certainly provide us, provided us with a party and that man showed his party piece, that sixth goal that clinched it, and superb. And it's all about confidence and uh, you've got to credit this side. They've broken the record of the 76 side that went uh, nine games without defeat and they've gone and broken that. With players like Dixie McNeil, Bobby Shinton, and with those players in the Who side. Who was in goal for that team, Dave? Well, I was there for <laughs> part of the time, but at least the fans now have got new heroes and they deserve it and uh, you can't give them too much praise. Let's, let's get uh, back down to Rob. Peter Nicholas, uh, at least you got a goal at the end. Yeah, good goal by Gary Shepard. To be fair, that um, we felt uh, coming to the game here tonight that Wrexham on a such a roller coaster ride. And to be fair to them, to uh, Dennis's players, their attitude was excellent. You know, oh, you know, for 90 minutes he never stopped working. Their movement, um, I got no complaints, and I, you know, I just feel sorry for my lads. It was that many, to be honest. What can your players take out of this? A lot of it, I would have thought. I mean, it, it, it was a, you know, their movement was good two players up front you're scoring goals of fun and that's the difference and to be fair the first goal didn't help but that's saying that I mean the lads have done well to get here to be honest Peter congratulations anyway for getting you cheers thanks a lot no problem Colin Addison it, yeah, it was it was spectacular wasn't it at times from Wrexham it was brilliant stuff great for the fans but tinge of sadness for, sadness for Newport and their supporters you know they would have hoped to have done a little better they didn't They've come up against a very, very good Wrexham side. And we've seen all the qualities shown tonight, what, what's got them promotion. It's been very, very impressive. But like I say, being an ex-Newport manager, um, I think Mark made, made the comment earlier that, uh, you know, they were always uh, chasing the game and uh, really outclassed. But, you know, I just feel a little tinge of sadness for them, for the players and, and for the supporters. They've come a long way. But then again, Nico just summed it up there. You know, they've got to the final. They've made it. They've come. All right. They've suffered a bad defeat, uh, but they can have no complaints. They're up against a very, very good Wrexham side tonight. I think Wrexham would have beaten a lot of sides tonight the, on that performance. Uh, and I guess even Peter Nicholas, Mark, travelling up here, a part of him in the back of his mind would have been thinking that this might have happened tonight. Yeah, and he would have been sort of not half expected, hoping uh, that the worst didn't happen, but the worst did happen. They got off to the worst possible start, conceded a goal which throws everything out, the plans completely out of the window, and the attitude and the application of the Wrexham players only added to that disappointment. And after that, they, they were really outclassed, but their glory was in getting here. They've beaten Swansea, they've beaten Cardiff, they should you know, be happy with that. They're happy to get here and play the part in what has been a good performance by Wrexham. Right, presentation time, money time as well. Let's rejoin Ian Gwynn Hughes. Yes, uh, the Newport County fans played their part, but Newport County too in the final, we're seeing Wrexham there, but Newport County at the moment receiving their losers' medals, plus uh, a cheque for £50,000 as runners-up, and that will help uh, Peter Nicholas and Newport County as uh, they aim towards the future. Board of Directors there of the FAW Premier Cup, its chairman, Mr Ian Skewis, and uh, Secretary General, Football Association of Wales, David Collins, handing out the medals for the losers. There's one, Jason Perry, of course, who is uh, happier memories of the race course. Now the moment, uh, as Jason Perry acknowledges the applause of the crowd, the home supporters have been waiting for Lee Tundall, man of the match, receives the loudest cheer of the night as he steps up two goals for him to receive his medal and the chance of Wrexham around the stadium, a promotion and cup double as uh, Lee Tundall decides he's not going to get off the podium and it's going to be very tight there if uh, everybody's to get on to receive their medals, Jim Whitley and Lee Tundall Sean Pedgick, one of the goal scorers, and uh, 
It'll be Brian Carey who's right at the back who will be the last one up to receive the trophy. There's Dennis Lawrence who's uh, had an excellent season for Wrexham. And there's uh, in the background one of the Wrexham administrators, the uh, chief executive, Mr David Rhodes, will be delighted this evening as Brian Carey now, the Wrexham captain this evening, steps up onto the podium to receive his medal and somewhere amongst uh, all of that I would imagine is the FAW Premier Cup trophy as the champagne caught top a familiar scene at the end of the season over the past few years here at the race course with the celebrations at the end of the FAW Premier Cup they turn to their supporters there is the trophy and Wrexham with Darren Ferguson who was injured this evening not playing win the FAW Premier Cup for the season 2002-2003 along with promotion to the second division a great season for Dennis Smith's side I'm sure they'll party long into the night this evening it is the end of the season and they can look forward, of course, to second division football. The man behind the success, of course, is the manager. And Dennis Smith is with Rob Phillips. Dennis Smith, congratulations. Uh, a great night for Wrexham. Yeah, very pleasing. I thought the lads showed a tremendous attitude. Uh, perhaps a bad substitution cost us a goal. But, you know, they, they, they went about it in a very professional manner. And fair play to Newport. They didn't come and sit back. They made it a game. They came at us and uh, we took advantage of the spaces they left but at least they came with the right approach how much will this help you now in the decisions you've got to make this summer <laughs> uh, i think we've already spent it <laughs> it was spent last season never mind this is we'll have to wait and see uh, we i'll be talking to the board beginning of next week i want to try and keep these players together because we've got a right atmosphere now and the right attitude and if we can keep them together then we've got a chance of doing well again next season and you wanted to finish on a high and you've just done just that yeah i mean we were determined to, to finish on a high i mean we've gone six five six the last three home games that's not bad by any stretch of the imagination dennis thanks very much congratulations Cheers, thank you we won the cup and as far as i'm aware we've never lost a newport since and if you know different keep it to yourself i like the world i'm living in okay Victory for Exxon, victory for Dennis Smith. Of course, there would be massive change afterwards. Lee Trundle gave this interview on the final whistle. Great way to end the season. Yeah, it is, you know, we've gone unbeaten again. We knew it was going to be a tough game, but, you know, we, the lads have pulled together and thought we played really well. You had the perfect start. Yeah, we did. We got off with an early goal and, you know, that settled us down a bit because we knew it was going to be hard. And then from then on, we just played our football. Like, first half... You know, we'll, although we've got the goals, we knew that we could have played better. And then we've come out second half and we've created a few chances. And you kept a really special one for last. Yeah, well, it's, you know, that's happy for me to finish on that. You know, that was one of my better goals. What does this mean to you now with the, uh, particularly the finance of the club? Well, you know, hopefully, I, you know, I've always said I'd like to stay here. Obviously, I would like to play at the highest level possible. But, you know, it, we've got a great setup here and I think we'll do really well next season. And this, uh, this money might help the chairman keep you players. Well, I hope so, yeah, you know, especially me and Andy, you know, because we are looking to stay, so hopefully it can be sorted out. Well, Lee, you are Ian Walsh's man of the match. Congratulations. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks. And after Trundle protesting that he was desperate to stay, he left. And according to Dennis Smith, didn't even contact the club or Smith to let them know he just left. Uh, Morel, of course, left as well in very different circumstances. He always made it plain that... He loved her at Wrexham, but the, he only came into professional football in his mid-twenties and that if he was to be made a, a once-in-a-lifetime offer to play at a big club at a higher level, he would have no option but to accept it if the deal was right. And Coventry came along and made him just that deal. So this is Coventry before they went to Kakakuku. So no hard feelings towards morale, whereas Trundle, sadly, his departure left a bit of a sour taste in the mouth. Wrexham, of course, would go on up into the third division, uh, but would never quite get that same thrust down the wings and would never get that sharpness up front. Chris Armstrong came back and was a, a good hard worker, but his injury problems didn't end. Chris Llewellyn came in for the first of two spells. 
is it me or is the tooth fairy got louder? Chris Llewellyn got came in. Uh, he was full of endeavour, but again, didn't film Rails boots. And Wrexham had some, some solid years, a couple of solid seasons before external factors hobbled them. So, a trophy. That was rather nice, wasn't it? Next week, another cup final. And here's one that's really rather special. Now, I did mention last week that I discovered stuff in my garage. Sounds worryingly Santa Clarita diet, but hey, I didn't mean it like that. I found some really old videotapes and I've been managing to extract some magic from them. And when we celebrated the anniversary of the 1995 Welsh Cup final, we couldn't find the full 90 minutes. Well, I did last Monday. So we're going to have a Welsh special next uh, Saturday. Wrexham against Cardiff City. The final Welsh Cup final. That's the football league teams are allowed to enter. Should be interesting. No spoilers. See you next time.